أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم إن الله اشترى من المؤمنين أنفسهم وأموالهم بأن لهم الجنة صدق الله العظيم وبلغنا رسوله النبي الكريم ونحن على ذلك من الشاهدين والشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين The ways of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the sunnahs of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam have been given to us to actually follow them. To actually follow them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as, a, as an example to be followed. So his sunnah, it is utter disgrace. It is utter disrespect to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and in fact to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself that the example that was given to us we neglect the ways of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. One thing that we do not think about is that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was masoom. He was free of sins. He was free of sins. All the ways of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the sunnahs of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam are also free of sin. And the people who are closest to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who made Sunnah their life, who would whatever they would see the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam doing, they would without asking, they would start to follow it. They became the Sahaba, they saw the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the state of Iman, they became the Sahaba, they are not masoom, they are not free of sins, but whatever sins they may even have committed, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has said in the Quran that they have been forgiven. They have been forgiven. In fact, this ayah that I read in the beginning, I intended to read it for some other meaning. But here also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised Muslims. This is about specifically the Ansar. We'll go into the detail. But this is specifically about the Ansar that these people, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bought their lives. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bought their lives in, in place of their own... In, in, and in return, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them Jannah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving them Jannah in return for their life and their amwal. So these people, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, at various places in the Quran, those people are not free of sins, but they because they followed the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa as perfectly as possible by anybody apart from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa They became those that even if they committed any sins, their sins are forgiven and the announcement has been made at multiple places in the Quran by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself. One thing that my Shaykh Dr. Abdul Haysar Arifi rahimahullah used to explain through this is that the closer you become to the life of Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you become protected from sins. You become protected from sins, from disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put that kind of special effect in the ways of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That Hazrat used to say, if I remember correct, his words were, Sunnat Allah Ta'ala ki hifazat ka mazboot qila hai. Sunnat Allah Ta'ala ki hifazat ka mazboot qila It's a strong, undefeatable castle of protection of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Whoever follows the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they become closer to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and they become closer to being masoom. They do not become perfectly masoom. Nobody can do that except the Anbiya or the angels. But they, the more they follow Sunnah in their life, the more they become protected of disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is indeed what we want. That we become protected against the disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is not asked that right from the next day we should grow a long beard and change our dress and pick up a long stick and go to our workplace. But in situations, in circumstances where there is no pressure upon us, where there is no pressure upon us. We are inside our home, we are driving our car, we are with our own self. What is stopping us from following the Sunnah of the Prophet My dear respected brothers, it sometimes comes to mind that if we neglect, 
and disregard the ways of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam even in the most private of our settings, even where we are not under pressure of anyone else, not even our wives or children, what face are we going to show? How are we going to face the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam on the Day of Judgment? You know, it might be, it might be in some level, although the love of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and us being the Ummati of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam demands that we fully follow the Sunnah no matter what. But it may be considered an excuse that Ya Allah, or on the Day of Judgment, we could tell the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that we wanted to follow your ways, we wanted to follow your ways, but we were so much under pressure from our surroundings. We tried our best. But when we are alone, when we are not pre- under the pressure of anyone else, what answer will we give to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that the ways, the perfect ways that he left behind for us, why did we not follow them? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us action upon the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Today the hadith that we are going to read, <coughs> we've been talking about this. This has been a discussion going on in different aspects of Sidq, or being truthful, being sincere and honest. Today, inshallah, we are going to read some hadith which talk about business or trade. And what is the reward of a truthful businessman? My Shaykh is Dr. Muftin Ran Kalyanvi. Before reading these hadiths, he explained to us that the biggest trade in these hadiths, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has told us about the high status of a person who remains true to their commitment of trade, which is called bear, bear or a transaction. So those people who remain true to their part of the bargain, their side of the bargain, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has, to the words of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us that they are very high people. They will be with the Anbiya and Siddiqeen and Shuhada and Salihin on the Day of Judgment. But Hazrat explained first this ayah that I decided <clears throat> that what is the biggest business deal, what is the biggest transaction that we have made. And we have already made that transaction. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is this ayah that I decided, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has explained it. Inna Allah ishtara min al anfusahum wa amwalahum their own lives and their wealth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bought it from them in place for Jannah, in lieu of Jannah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bought it from them, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taken it from them, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised Jannah in return for that. The background, the specific background of this ayah, although there's tawassur in the, there's, there's expansion in the meanings of every ayah of the Quran, that every ayah of the Quran pertains, not every ayah, a lot of ayat of the Quran pertain to a specific background, but the ruling given, is general. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is about Bayt Uqba, which is a few people from the Ansar of Medina. They came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam before the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had migrated to Medina, of course. They came for Hajj and they met the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Ansar were such lovely people that they, I have told many times about the historic background, that they had come to place themselves in Medina in waiting for the Prophet Sallallahu So they had, they were such lovely people that they had come to stay at this place called Yathrib in waiting for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And they, they were, they kept on looking for the signs of the final Prophet of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. As soon as he comes, they were going to go and going to give bath, going to uh, uh, bring Islam. So these people at the time of Hajj, they had gone to the, they had gone to Mecca for Hajj, and they heard that there is somebody who is claiming to be the final prophet of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. So they came and met the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and such an happening happened three times. So first year there was like three or five people. Next year there was a little more, seven or eleven people. Then there was the last, the third time there was almost I think forty people, if I remember correct. So. At this time, the third time, when there was 40 people, they actually made a pact with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And if I remember correct, it was Hadith Abdullah ibn Rawaha radiallahu an. When they were making this pact with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Abdullah ibn Rawaha radiallahu an said, Ya Rasulullah, we are making a deal, we are making a transaction, so we should, we should make the expectations clear for each other. We should make the expectations clear for each other. 
the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that on behalf of Allah, on behalf of Allah, I require from you that you will worship Allah and not include anyone in the worship of Allah subhanahu wa taala. So that means that not only by your tongues you will worship Allah subhanahu wa taala, not only with your bodies you will only do sajda and ruku to Allah subhanahu wa taala, but also with your actions you will prove that you believe in nobody but Allah subhanahu wa taala. And as for myself, I ask of you, your side of the deal is, your side of the bargain is that you will protect me as you protect your own selves and as you protect your own belongings. Abdullah ibn Rawaha radiallahu anh said, Ya Rasulullah, if we do that, if we do that, what are we going to get in return? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said that you are definitely going to enter, I promise you, Jannah in return. Upon this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down this ayah, Inna Allah ashtara min al mu'mini. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has already bought from mu'mineen, from the people who have believed, for a very small cost, which is to give up their life if there is, there is, there is a need, and to give up their amwal if there is a need, and they will get Jannah. Bi anna lahumul Jannah. They will get Jannah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put a stamp on, on, on the words of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa in the Quran. This was a transaction that was made. And the Ansar, you pick up any book of Seerah and you will find out how they stayed true to this commitment. How they stayed true to this commitment. When Badr happened, nobody can say that Ansar were behind and Muhajireen who were actually who had migrated from Makkah with the Prophet ﷺ, they were ahead. Nobody can claim that. When Uhud happened, Many of them got martyred defending the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. In fact, there is a special group of Sahaba which are known in the books of history as the guardians of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was alone in the circle of Kuffar fighting during Uhud, there was these, I think if I remember, 14 Sahaba who were right next to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who surrounded the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to protect. Many of them were Ansar. Many of them were Ansar. So my dear respected brothers, this is how a trade, a, your side of the bargain is fulfilled. This is the example that we have to follow. The pact that we have made, because this ayat is not restricted to Ansar only. Allah SWT has said, Inna Allah ashtara min al All the believers that will keep on coming till the day of judgment, that will keep on coming till the day of judgment, Allah has bought their souls, Allah has bought their belongings. Their belongings no more belong to their own selves. Their, their lives do not belong to their own selves. And Allah has bought them and Allah has promised Jannah in return. My dear respected brothers, this is the biggest deal that we have made in our lives. And we have to stand up. We have to, we have to hold true to it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the strength. The words of the hadith are again general that someone who holds true to their business deal, business deal, of course, these are, this is supposed to be a halal business deal, a true <coughs> permissible business deal, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decided for them Jannah. The other thing that should be understood is that when we read this hadith, a very beautiful thing comes forward, comes forth, which is that Islam is such a perfect deen, such a perfect deen. In fact, it is one of the, one of the things that, that testify for Islam to be the perfect deen that will hold true to the, last day of, to the last day of this world is that Islam has not asked Muslims to adopt a life of Rahbaniyat, which is to give up this world totally and give up everything of this world and stay in a jungle or in a desert and only remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and not do anything else. Somebody who is sitting in the market, somebody who's there doing their thing, earning their livelihood, but if they are doing it according to the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the intention of fulfilling the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving them the best of reward, the best of reward. And <clears throat> It was asked 
one of our mashayikh, somebody came and asked them that I am trying to open a window in my house. I am trying to open a window in my house. So he, the sheikh asked him that what is your intention with that? He said that my house will become airy and windy. The sheikh said that make an intention that when the azan will be called out through this window I will hear the sound of azan, the call from the masjid. Air will come by itself but you will get reward every time only for opening this window which, are you, doing, which you are doing for whatever reason you may have you will get a reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The life of a Muslim is such, the life of a Muslim is such that whatever they do if it is permissible within the halal boundaries, they can make it a worship. They can make it a worship. In fact, some have said that people who are ushaq of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who are in love with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they are constantly in a state of salah, in a state of prayer. How so? The Prophet ﷺ has said that one who is waiting for salah, one who is waiting for salah, is just like the one who is in salah. This, this is hadith of the Prophet So if somebody has love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a tall claim, even if somebody is only mindful about their salah and coming to masjid, they are as if they are waiting for salah. So if you, even if you have to go anywhere else, you have to go buy your groceries, you have to be at your home even, you have to relax even, you have to sleep even. You go to bed thinking that I have to wake up at such and such time, I have to be in the masjid. Your sleep will become ibadat. Your whatever, you're buying groceries, you're, you're, you're staying with your wife, you're talking to your children will become ibadat. And you will be in a state, you will be considered, you will be written in the books of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as somebody who is in the state of salah because they are waiting for salah. They are waiting for salah. Anyway, so somebody who is in the market, who is doing it for, apparently for this world, but if they have this intention that I am going to Number one, they, they stay within the boundaries of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is that whatever they are selling or whatever they are buying, they, when they are selling something, they do not say false things about it or take false oaths about the good features that are non-existent in, the, in that thing that they are selling. And when they are buying something, they do not find false in that unnecessarily, in that whatever you are, they are buying, in an effort to reduce the price. They do not do that kind of thing. And when they have the intention that we are doing this to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by fulfilling the command, that command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has asked us to, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has burdened us with the responsibility of fulfilling the needs of our children, our families and our own selves. And this, all of this becomes ibadah and if done the right way, it becomes a source of their entry into Jannah and not only entry into Jannah but entry into the highest levels of Jannah. One thing that I have asked the ulama is, and it's written in books as well, that the people who work, who are employed somewhere, which is for the most part all of us, who work for a salary, even that according to some ulama is considered trade, is considered business. Because it is not a business of goods, it is not a trade of goods that you buy something and you give something in return or you give money in return, but it is a, a business of services. It is a trade of services that you have sold your time, you have sold your services in return for money. So this is also tijarat. This is also business. And if we do that truthfully and keeping in mind the commands and the limits set forth by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and for the right reasons, which is to fulfill the needs of our family and the needs of deen in general in the community then even that becomes ibadat. Our sitting on our desk, our working on our computers or whatever we are doing, our looking at the patients, whatever we are doing, all of that becomes ibadat. An Abi Sa'id qal qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam at-tajiru as-saduq al-ameen ma'a al-nabiyyin wa al-siddiqin wa al-shuhada. Abu Sa'id Khudri radiyallahu anh ni rewaayat farmaya ki Rasul Akram sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ni farmaya satcha wa ramanat dar tajir anbiya, siddiqin wa al-shuhada ke saath hoga. In the narrated by Sayyidina Abu Sa'id al-Khudri radiallahu an, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that a truthful trader, business person, will be with the Anbiya 
پروفٹس صدیقین شہدا عن عبید ابن رفاع عن ابی عن النبی صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم قال التجار يحشرون يوم القیامة فجارا الا من اتقى وبر وصدق عبید ابن رفاع اپنے والد ماجد جو کہ حضرت رفاع رضی اللہ عنہ ان سے روایت کرتے ہیں کہ انہوں نے رسول اکرم صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم سے یہ حدیث روایت کی کہ آپ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم نے اشارت فرمایا کہ تاجر لوگ قیامت کے دن سب بدکار اٹھائے جائیں گے یعنی عام تاجر ان کا حشر بدکاروں جیسا ہوگا سوائے ان کے جنہوں نے اپنی تجارت میں تقوی اور حسن سلوک اور سچائی کو پیش نظر رکھا عبید ابن رفاع نریش فرم ہز فادر رفاع رضی اللہ عنہ that he copied this hadith from the Prophet صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم he narrated this hadith from the Prophet صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم the Prophet صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم said that all business people will be presented before Allah سبحانہ وتعالی will be raised on the day of judgment as evil doers except those who take care of taqwa and good akhlaq and truthfulness in their trade This hadith also mentions uh, th- those three, two things that we kind of hinted at that uh, talked about. Taqwa is being fearful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and of course all things that all things good that we do a Muslim does is under their taqwa. Under their taqwa. And they do it truthfully but also with a good akhlaq. With a, treat the people well. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among those and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us The ones who gain the benefit of all the things, all the good things that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has told us. Amin Ya Rabbil Alameen. We do uh, the Khatam of Yasin Sharif, um, which is uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has said that a ble- believing slave, whenever they recite Surah Yasin upon any specific intention, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also fulfills that intention. So we read Yasin Sharif every Friday here. Try to complete the count of 41. Uh, and then make dua before making dua. So inshallah I request everyone to recite Surah Yasin. Um, Inshallah, I'll read uh, a very famous Arabic poetry. It's called Qasida Burda, or a poetry of the shawl. It is said about <coughs> this that it is written by Imam Busiri, rahimahullah. It's a famous poetry where he was paralyzed, he was really sick, and in his dream, he saw the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa asked him to recite this poetry to him. And then, As a, as a prize, the Prophet ﷺ gave him his, um, his shawl that he was wearing in that dream. And when Imam Busiri rahimahullah woke up, he actually had that shawl in his hands. Of course, you don't have to believe in this, but this poetry is, has found such acceptance that even at the doors of the house of the Prophet ﷺ, some of its couplets are written still today. If you go there, inshallah, may Allah SWT take all of us. There's photos of it available online that two of the couplets of this are written on right on the on the latch you know the, the kundi you find kundi right it's an old style big kundi so on the face of it two couplets there's two doors each of these doors there's written couplets of this we we had we, we might have had a hard time believing this but even in present day there's a shaq of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that such things happened to them there was this person uh, who was actually a murid of my grand sheikh Hazrat Hafiz Abraham al after his, whose name we named the school Abraham Academy. After the demise of his sheikh Hazrat Hafiz Abraham al he saw him in a dream and he saw him in Masjid al Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam and he asked him that have you met the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam? So he said no I have not been able to meet the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. So Hazrat Hafiz Sahib took him to meet the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam at that time in his dream he saw he was eating some dates. So the Prophet gave him four dates and 
when he came in that dream and he got up from the majlis of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he gave two to his sheikh al hafiz sahab actually ate one in the dream and gave one to hafiz sahab when he actually woke up he had two dates in his hands and this is this is something i i know this person personally taqi sahab his name is taqi he was he died i think five or six years back so these things happen in reality it's it's just a matter of love of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam There's some Urdu translation with it, so we'll read them together, and then there's some Farsi ashar too. And see, it's a, it's a long qasida basically. We'll just read some that are famous. Maula ya salli wa sallim daiman abadan. على حبيبك خير الخلق كلهم مولاي صلي وسلم دائما ابدا على حبيبك خير الخلق كلهم سهر كبط تا معصوم كليا मुस्कुराती थी हवाएं खैर मुकदम के तराने गुनगुनाती थी पसीना शाद मानी से था फूलों की जबीनों पर चमन में हर तरफ शबनम के मोती झिल मिलाते थे नसीमे सुबह के झोंके दिलों को गुदगुदाते थे कि जैसे खाक पर जन्नत उतर आई उतर आई अभी जबरील उतरे भी न थे काबे के मंबर से कि इतने में सदा आई ये अब्दुल्लाह के घर से मुबारक हो शहे हर दो सरा तशरीफ ले आए मुबारक हो मोहम्मद मुस्तफ़ा तशरीफ ले आए मौलाया सली वसलम दाई मन अबदन अला हबी बी का खैर खलकी कुल محمد سيد الكونين واتق عليه محمد سيد الكونين واتق عليه هو الفريقين من عرب ومن عجم هو الفريقين सल 
وسلم دائما ابدا على حبيبك خير الخلق كلهم so this next year this is written in the door of the house of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam هو الحبيب الذي ترجى شفاعته basically means that he is that beloved of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we have all our hopes of shafa'at all our hopes of salvation on the day of judgment lie in him huwa al-habib al-lazhi turja shafa'atuhu likulli hawlim min al-ahwali kullihimi huwa al-habib al-lazhi turja shafa'atuhu لكل هول من الأهوال كلهم And the second row of this is written حاشاه أن يحرم الراجع مكارمه حاشاه أن يحرم الراجع مكارمه أو يرجع الجار منه غير basically means that it is simply not possible that anyone comes to the to this doorstep of the Prophet and is not respected, does not gain respect at this doorstep, is not honored at this doorstep, or anyone who comes near it and is returned without without being granted their wish. <laughs> حاشاه أن يحرم الراجع عما كارمه أو يرجع الجار منه غير محترم أو يرجع الجار منه غير محترم مولا يا صلي وسلم دائما أبدا على حبيبك خير الخلق كلهم مولا يا صلي وسلم دائما أبدا على حبيبك خير الخلق كلهم سلام سبرك جسك پاس چاندی تھی نہ سونا تھا سلام اس پر کے ٹوٹا گوریا جس کا بچھونا تھا سلام اس پر کے اسرار محبت جس نے سکھلائے سلام اس پر کے جس نے زخم کھا کر پھول برسائے سلام آمنہ کے لال اے محبوب سبحانی سلام فخر موجودات فخر نوع انسانی تیرا در ہو میرا سر ہو میرا دل ہو تیرا گھر ہو تمنا وہ تسرسی ہے مگر تمہید تولانی مولا یا صلی وسلم دائما ابدا على حبیبیکا خیر الخلق کلیم نبی کی یاد ہی سے روح مومن شاد ہوتی ہے نبی کے ذکر ہی سے برز میں دل آباد ہوتی ہے نبی سے عشق کا دعوی سر آنکھوں پر مگر اے دوست محبت کیا عمل کی قید سے آزاد ہوتی ہے مولا یا صلی وسلم دائما ابدا على حبیبیکا خیر الخلق کلیمی سلام اس پر جسے 
बेचैन रखती फिक्र उम्मत की सलाम उस पर के जिसके पास है कुंजी शफात की सलाम उस पर है शर्म की जिसने अदाए दी सलाम उस पर के जिसने माओ बहनों को रदाए दी सलाम उस पर असर जिसने किया नाफिज शरीयत को सलाम उस पर के तनहा मात दे दी अक्सरियत को मौलाया सलिम दाई मन अबदन अला हबीबी का खैर खुली अगले पिछले नए पुराने ज़ाहरी बातें खुफिया आलानिया या अल्लाह जो हमने किए और हमने याद रखे या जो हमको भूल गए या अल्लाह या अल्लाह जो हमने अल्लाह अपनी निगाहों से किए अपने आज़ाए दिल से किए या अल्लाह जिसमानी आज़ा से किए या अल्लाह रूहानी आज़ा से किए या अल्लाह आप सब माफ़ फरमा दीजिए या अल्लाह या अल्लाह आपके नबी सल्ला वसलम ने हमको बताया है कि आदम का बेटा बेटा बनी आदम अगर गुनाह कर कर के सारी कायनत को भर दे या अल्लाह कायनत को भर के या अल्लाह खलाओं को भी भर दे या अल्लाह फिर भी या अल्लाह अगर एक मरतबा आपके सामने बैठ जाए और आपसे माफ़ी मांग ले इस यकीन के साथ कि आप गुनाह माफ़ फरमाने वाले हैं गुनाहों को माफ़ फरमा के या अल्लाह खुश होते हैं या अल्लाह आप सारे गुनाहों को माफ़ फरमा देते हैं या अल्लाह हम इंतहाई महताज हैं या अल्लाह या अल्लाह आप रहीम हैं या अल्लाह अपनी सिफत रहमत का इजहार फरमा दीजिए या अल्लाह अपनी सिफत रहमत का इजहार फरमा के या अल्लाह शैतान को पस्त फरमा दीजिए या अल्लाह शैतान को हरा दीजिए हमारे नफ्स को हरा दीजिए या अल्लाह हालात ज़माना को हरा दी हरा दीजिए या अल्लाह या अल्लाह आप हमको कामयाब फरमा दीजिए या अल्लाह आपकी तरफ से मफ़रत पा जाने में या अल्लाह हमको कामयाब फरमा दीजिए या अल्लाह हमें माफ़ फरमा के प्यारे हबीब सल्ला वसलम के अल्लाह दिल को खुश फरमा दीजिए या अल्लाह क़्यामत में या अल्लाह प्यारे हबीब सल्लल्लाहु अलैहि वसल्लम के लिए या अल्लाह बाय से फ़ख्र बना दीजिए या अल्लाह आपके हबीब सल्लल्लाहु अलैहि वसल्लम ने या अल्लाह रातों को जाग जाग कर या अल्लाह हमारे मफ़रत तलब की या अल्लाह आपकी रहमत हमारे लिए तलब करी या अल्लाह प्यारे हबीब सल्ला वसलम की दुआओं का असर दिखा दीजिए या अल्लाह हमें गुनाहों से निकाल के या अल्लाह अपनी इतहा की ज़िंदगी में लगा दीजिए हमारे दिल को ऐसा बना दीजिए हमारी तबीयत को ऐसा बना दीजिए कि या अल्लाह आपकी बात माने बगैर आपको या अल्लाह याद रखे बगैर या अल्लाह आपसे ताल्लुक रखे बगैर या अल्लाह हमें चैन ही ना है या अल्लाह या अल्लाह ऐसा बना दीजिए या अल्लाह हर लम्हा या अल्लाह अपनी याद में रहने वाला बनाइए अपनी याद के तकाजों को पूरा करने वाला बनाइए प्यारे हबीब सल्लल्लाहु अलैहि वसल्लम की या अल्लाह मोहब्बत नसीब फरमाइए उनकी मोहब्बत में सोना जागना उठना बैठना चलना फिरना या अल्लाह इस दुनिया में जीना इस दुनिया से जाना नसीब फरमाइए या अल्लाह की सारी दुआएँ या अल्लाह हमारे लिए भी कबूल फरमाइए हमारे अहल आयाल के लिए भी कबूल फरमाइए हमारे आने वाली नस्लों के लिए कबूल फरमाइए या अल्लाह रहीम करीम है या अल्लाह कुछ दे के या अल्लाह आपका कुछ जाता नहीं या अल्लाह या अल्लाह हमको आता फरमा दीजिए जो मांग सके वो भी आता फरमाइए जो ना मांगा मांगना चाहिए तो वो भी आता फरमाइए या अल्लाह यहाँ में या अल्लाह बाकायदा एक मस्जिद नसीब फरमाइए या अल्लाह या अल्लाह खान खान नसीब फरमाइए या अल्लाह अपने प्यारों की या अल्लाह प्यारे हबीब सल्ला वसलम की नस्बतों को अल्लाह जारी करने के लिए या अल्लाह इदारा नसीब फरमाइए या अल्लाह ऐसे लोग नसीब फरमाइए या अल्लाह सारे आलम में या अल्लाह प्यारे हबीब सल्ला वसलम का जिक्र उनका उनकी फ़िक्र या अल्लाह यहाँ से जारी फरमाइए हमको इस काम के लिए खूब खूब या अल्लाह कबूल फरमाइए अखलास के साथ या अल्लाह दाम दर में सुखने इस काम में या अल्लाह लगने वाला बनाइए और या अल्लाह हमारी तरफ से इसको कबूल भी फरमाइए या अल्लाह इसको हमारे लिए आसान भी फरमाइए या अल्लाह तमाम ज़ाहरी बात इन फितों से बचा लीजिए या अल्लाह हमारे पास ना माल है ना इरादे हैं या अल्लाह ना या अल्लाह वसाइल हैं या अल्लाह हमारा पूरा का पूरा आसरा आप ही की ज़ात है या अल्लाह या अल्लाह आप ही का जिक्र करके या अल्लाह आप ही से दुआ करते हैं या अल्लाह आप अपनी अता का करश्मा दिखा दीजिए अपनी अता का करश्मा दिखा दीजिए कुछ ना होने पर या अल्लाह सब फरमा दीजिए सब इंतज़ाम फरमा दीजिए आप मुसबलबाब हैं या अल्लाह या अल्लाह इसबाब के महताज नहीं या अल्लाह आप कुछ ना होने पर अल्लाह सब फरमा दीजिए समीना वाना वफरान को रब बना वलिकमसी सल्ला तैर खलक़ी सईदिना मौलाना महमद 
وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين آمين برحمة الله الرحمن الرحيم